In this video, we'll take a look at the remainder theorem and how it can be used to find remainders in algebraic divisions. And so the remainder theorem says when a polynomial of p of x is divided by x minus b, the remainder is p of b. Now notice this says x minus b and the remainder is p of b. It's not p of negative b. So it's x minus some number. In the first example, it says find the remainder when this polynomial is divided by x plus 1. So notice in this example, there's a plus here. So to get the correct value for b, because we have to write it as x minus, then we would have to write it as x take away negative 1. And so the b value would be negative 1. So we would put negative 1 in our polynomial. So here's our polynomial. Uh, it's just written like this. So I'll call it p of x is x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 3. So we would substitute negative 1 in place of x. And so that's the calculation to find the remainder when we're dividing by x plus 1. So negative 1 to the fourth is 1. Uh, negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 2 is plus 2. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 times 5 is plus 5, and we have the plus 3 on the end. So if we add all this up, 3 and 5 is 8, 9, 10, and 2 makes 12. So the remainder would be 12. Now, that's, that's finding the remainder in this division using the remainder theorem. Uh, probably even a little bit less work is actually to do the uh, synthetic division. So if you, and this is another way to find the remainder. So 1, negative 2, 1, negative 5, 3. That's the coefficients from the polynomial. So if we're dividing by x plus 1, we would put this negative 1 here. And so bring the 1 down and multiply that by the negative 1. So that's negative 1. So we we'll put a negative 1 here and add it to the negative 2, which is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, so we put a 3 here and add it to the 1, we get 4. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. We add those, we get negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9, add it to the 3, and we get a remainder of 12. So uh, that's just another way to find, that's not the remainder theorem, just another way to find or verify that this 12 is correct. Of course, this is the calculation that I did in my calculator to, uh, to verify this as well. And again, this is actually the same calculation as being shown right here. And again, I got 12. So we can, with lots of confidence, say the remainder is 12. In the second example, we're asked to find the value of k if the remainder is negative 512, sorry, 516. When this polynomial, notice that here's our k, it's the coefficient of the x squared term. When this uh, polynomial is divided by x minus 3. So here's our polynomial. So if we're dividing by x minus 3 and we want to find the remainder, we would put 3 in place of x. So we'll find p of 3. Put 3 everywhere in place of x. Now, if, um, if the remainder is negative 516, then this would equal negative 516. And so that's how we can find the value for k. So if we, we want to evaluate all this now, and so uh, here's the larger stuff done. Negative 2 times 3 to the fifth is negative 486. Uh, 3 cubed actually isn't that big. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And so we'll fill all those in. Now this is negative 486 plus 27. 3 squared is 9, so this would be a 9k, plus the 6 equals negative 516. If we add 6, 27, and negative 486, we get negative 453. So we have 9k minus 453, or negative 453 plus 9k equals the 5, negative 516. And so if we add 453 to both sides, or bring the 453 over and add it to the negative 516, we get negative 63 over here. And dividing out the 9, we get k to be negative 7. So that would be the k value when, if the remainder is negative 516, when this polynomial is divided by x minus 3. Now, the, we're given the remainder here of negative 516, um, one of the things that the remainder theorem is useful for 
is in factoring. And we'll get to this in another lesson called the factor theorem. See, the remainder here is negative 5, 16. So when this polynomial with negative 7 here is divided by x minus 3, there's a non-zero remainder. So we would not say that x minus 3 is a factor of this. Just as up here the remainder was 12, when the remainder works out to be 0, then you have what's called a factor, and then that's the factor theorem. We'll get into that another time. And actually, it's one of the ways you can use to solve polynomial equations. In the last example here, we're asked, what is the remainder when this polynomial is divided by 3x minus 2? And so, what we would do is find p of 2 thirds. Now, the reason it's 2 thirds is we would actually take this 3x minus 2, and if you remember dividing polynomials, this is actually the restriction. So that actually can't equal 0, and that's the how you find the restriction. So if you take the negative 2 over, or add 2 to both sides, you get 3x equals 2, and then divide out the 3, so that's where the two-thirds comes from. It's actually the restriction in this division. So that's why we're finding p of two-thirds. So this will actually be the same as if we were dividing by x minus two-thirds. So p of two-thirds, um, we're, again, we're putting two-thirds here, here, and here. Now, so if we cube 2 thirds, uh, 2 cubed is 8 and 3 cubed is 27. If we square 2 thirds, 2 squared is 4 and 3 squared is 9. And of course we have the 2 thirds here. So let's do the multiplying in here. Now uh, I want to get a common denominator. So when we notice that uh, 3 will actually divide into these, actually bring the pen up again. So we can do some reducing. 3 goes into that 4 times, and 3 goes into that leaving a 9. So that's why 4 times 8 is 32, and we have a 9 in the denominator. Uh, if we multiply this negative 11 by 4, that's why it's minus 44 over 9. Now, the uh, we want to get a common denominator. So notice these first two both have 9. So I'm going to multiply this one in the middle of the, the multiplication by 3 on top and bottom just to get a common denominator. 3 times 3 is this uh, 9 right here. So it's actually 17 times 2 times 3, or 17 times 6 gives you this 102. And actually, let's uh, get rid of that. Erase a bit of that. And the 6 has a denominator of 1. So I, in order to get a common denominator of 9, I would multiply that by 9 top and bottom. And so minus negative 6 times 9 is negative 54, so that's where the negative 54 over 9 comes from. So now I have a common denominator, so I can just add all these. 32 minus 44 plus 102 minus 54. And that works out to 36. And 36 does divide evenly by 9, so it gives us a remainder of 4. So the remainder is 4 in this division. And once again, since the remainder is not 0, we would, we would not say that 3x minus 2 is a factor of this. If it was 0, then it would actually be a factor. And that's the end of the lesson.